put in modern terms, he took matters into his own hands and, and he did what, what was right, what, what he thought was right, but also what, what was right to do. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll read a little bit what the sages say. Well, they don't say much, they don't, I don't know what, what they say much about um, Pinchas, but Hillel, Hillel was a little bit, um, Hillel, um, he, he liked peace, you know, so anyway. Um, we'll read what, what Halal has read, has said here. He said, um, be the disciples of Aharon, loving peace and pursuing peace, loving human beings and bringing them close to the Torah. And then Rabbi Meir says, when Aharon would walk in the street and chance to meet an evil or wicked person, he would greet him. If afterwards that person would think of committing a transgression, he would think, Woe is me, if I met Aharon, how can I lift my eyes to him? I would be ashamed since he greeted me, and he would not sin. Similarly, if two people quarreled, Aharon would sit with one and tell him, the other fellow was beating his breast and tearing his clothes, saying, Woe is me, I treated him badly. Aharon would say to him, say with him until he was pacified, and then go and sit with the other man and tell him the same thing. Then the two would meet, they would embrace and kiss each other. So, um, you know, our, our sages recognize how, how Pinchas was, his zealotry was important and needed at the time, but they, 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 they also realized the perils of zealotry, um, how it can be um, taken, and, you know, it can go, go too far. You know? If everybody's a zealot, it becomes... Um, I guess too harsh. I don't know how to say it, but um, but then of course you know Hillel and others of his time um, were seeing that it was important to pursue peace. Important to, I mean, even the Torah and the Torah, the, the Tanakh, all over it talks about how we should be people of peace, and and you know that should be our first, our first way to do it and if and if I guess if that doesn't work um, then you continue um, then you do it do it the, the harsher way but you know first you pursue peace um, and it's it's strange and it, I think in some ways it's strange because you know Aharon he, like Hillel you know um, and not even Hillel, a lot of the sages, they all pushed, like Aaron was, a, was this great leader, you know, and, um, but he had some major fa failures, right? He was, you know, he, he, he's the one who, who set up the golden cat, I mean, you know, produced the golden calf for the people, you know. Um, he, joined he joined on the Miriam side. He wasn't. I would guess he wasn't a, a zealot, you know, he wasn't strong. He was trying, he was, he was the guy of peace. He was always trying to, you know, make people happy. It doesn't always work, right? But I guess, you know, but it wasn't a bad, um, obviously it wasn't a bad thing because all the sages looked at it as a good thing, you know, so it's like this toss up, you know, it's like, he was, he was great. You should follow him, but not all the time, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. you can't always follow him all the time, but most of the time. His example was the best. I guess that's what they're saying. Um, um, but but one thing that Hillel said, and he followed up. He said, "He had this uh, the, this emotion. You know, you, you should love your fellow man." And then he gave you an an example of what how to love your fellow man. And he said, "Teach them Torah. Get, bring them closer to Torah." And so he liked to say he he had. He, he shares this abstract emotion, and then he follows it with an action of something to do. And then the other example of, of Aharon, you know, he didn't just try to make peace. He, like, did actions. He, like, went and talked to the, 
the guy, the two guys that were having fight, a fight, and like, you know, he, he you know, he might have said a white lie to them, but he got them to to let down their guard enough so that they would forgive each other. You know, um, and it's a it's a skill. You know, I don't know if everybody has that kind of skill, but I know there there's some people that do, and they should use that. You know, definitely use that skill to to bring people back together and to bring peace. You know. Um, and so Rabbi Hammer, who wrote this commentary, uh, he was talking about how he was a disciple of, Mo, of, of Aaron without even knowing it. Um, because, you know, when he was young, like, like nine or something, um, his mom and, and, her, and her best friend got in some fight and they weren't, weren't talking to each other for, for a while. And, um, and he went to both of them. Well, he went to the friend and, and told her, you know, like, you know, my mom really misses you and wants you to you know, come come back and reconcile or whatever, you know. And then he went to his mother and said the same thing. So he said, he did, this, he did what Aaron did, but he didn't even know about that story, you know, yet. He was too young, I guess, never didn't learn it. But, he, you know, he helped reconcile his, his fr the friendship that his mom had with her, with her friend. And they um, became um, really good friends again, you know, and for the rest of their life. You know, they didn't have any more, um, they didn't have any other falling out. They, they, they stayed together as friends. Um, so he, he, to him, he that was a big deal. And so he like, kind of, you know, that that followed him all all his life. And so he um, always tried to pursue peace throughout um, whatever whatever um, work he had. As a rabbi, and he also he said he didn't want, he didn't like to, um, I guess, push his position. He liked to have more like have teams working on things, and not just have as him as like the sole leader, you know, the only guy that was leading everything. Um, he said he always preferred teamwork over asserting his professional hierarchy. With both colleagues and congregants, patience and tolerance are required, and above all, mutual respect. Aharon, as Aharon modeled, it was it is important to treat others well, to avoid conflicts whenever possible, and in fact, to actively advance the cause of peace. Hillel may have been may have intended his words for sages, teachers of Judaism, but they have potential to be meaningful to every one of us. That's what I had to share. Um, had, yeah, so I, just to, I just wanted to say um, that in Judaism, it's understood that there are prophets outside of Israel um, that, you know, just like, um, just like Bil'am, he, he was a prophet of God and he knew God, um, but he was wicked, he was, he was evil. and. Rabbi Nachman says that he, he was a Torah scholar, but he used his knowledge of God for evil instead of for good. And that, that reminds me of, even today, I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't call you know, people evil or good, but sometimes you know, the way I discern, there's a lot of rabbis out there and teachers. And for me, the way I discern, you know, is this someone that God wants me to listen to? Is what is, what are they trying to encourage me to do? What are they trying to make me into? Are they trying to make me into someone that is more judgmental, judgmental, or more hateful to my fellow man? Or are they trying to make me understand? human nature more so I will be more at peace and have more have greater love for for God's children all of God's children and you know there there are Torah teachers out there that I mean you can you can you can take verses from the Bible very selectively and paint a terrible picture of hate and negativity and you can take the same Bible and you can paint a beautiful picture of mercy and, and love and you know, this, this, 
this a picture of a loving father drawing his wayward children to repentance. And then an, another person who's reading the same book can can paint a picture of you know an angry God that is going to punish everyone for all their sins. And are are they both true? They're they're both true, actually. But which one, which picture of God is appropriate, is best for that time and place, is best for you as a person? And it's not to ignore sides of God, but there are, there's a time and place for everything. There's a time and place for God's judgment, and there's a time and place for God's mercy. And I, I think that we have to be discerning in that, you know, what the people that we're listening to, the things that we're reading, is it is it helping us? Is it is it helping us to be light and draw people closer to God, or is it making us into someone that is re is repulsive to to people so much that they are even turned away from our God because of what we are learning and what we are absorbing? And um, it also reminds me of, you know, the story of Joan of Arc. I believe Joan of Arc was a prophet of God, and she was used by God, and she, she brought messages, you know, to her people to help them. But she was not a prophet for Israel, obviously. She didn't, you know, follow Torah. She didn't, she wasn't Jewish. But she was still, she was still anointed for a time and season to help, um, to help her country, to help people, certain people. I think that's an example of Balak, not that she was, you know, evil like uh, Balaam, Balaam was, but eventually she did start, you know, make, make, start giving wrong messages and her people started trusting her in her too much and they started failing. And I'm imagining that maybe Balaam was once a good guy, you know, maybe he was once a good prophet. But later on, you know, it got to him, it got to his head, and he started abusing his knowledge and his power. And, and I think that's a plague that happens in the Jewish world, the Messianic world, the Christian world, you know, all these religious leaders who I'm sure at first they meant well, you know, they meant to bring people closer to God. And then at some point they realized the power that they had because of their knowledge of God's word, it just corrupted them and they started doing evil things with them. It's very easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. Power can power can corrupt. So it's good to stay humble, right? I think Hashem oftentimes humbles us um, when we when we think when we're thinking everything's great and stuff, then He throws in He throws us something to humble us, you know. Saying uh, you're you're just a regular guy. No. <laughs> you're immortal, you know. No.